okay, well, I'm just telling you, like, you know, it's very easy to, like, hang out in bigger pockets and have all these guys shit talk me and make up lies about me. And from people who don't know me, don't know anything about me, and people who are, like, direct competitors who were trying to get my business. Why did you decide to speak with us and appear in this film? I'm hearing Clayton Morris constantly talking about, you know, on this news outlet and this news outlet, oh, I'm such a victim, and oh, most of my clients were happy, and these are just a few malcontents. And so I, I think it's time for us to stop listening to the attorney who says, don't go to the media, it'll hurt our case. How is your life different today, having been through working with Clayton Morris and his company, Morris Invest? How has your life changed since you met him? Like, how do you live today versus how you thought you were going to be living out your retirement? Well, before him, I lived in a half a million dollar condo in Honolulu. I worked for a fabulous country uh, company, traveled all over the world. Uh, I was one of those people who couldn't tell you what the price of anything was because I didn't have to worry about the price of anything. If I wanted it, I bought it. Yeah, I lived four blocks off of uh, Ala Moana Beach Park in Honolulu. I, you know, if I wanted to, you know, to fly to Europe to be with friends, I could fly to Europe to be with friends. I spent probably six thousand dollars a month. Uh, yeah, about $6,000 a month without even thinking about it. Still having plenty of money to save. You know, so I'd have it ready to throw on a scam. Today, I live on less than $60 a day. And I live in Medellin, Colombia. Here I can live. My apartment here is... Uh, under $18 a day. I spend about $5 a day on food here. Uh, I own a small amount of things. They're in a storage unit in Honolulu now. That's my biggest expense all year long is that storage unit. So I no longer have a car. I sold all my jewelry. I sold my condo. Uh, I have less than twenty thousand dollars in the bank as an emergency fund that's all that's left of that money that i saved back to keep me going while my uh investments were maturing uh, you know one reason i don't want to be on video today is i haven't had a haircut in ages because i can't afford to have a haircut i've budgeted for a haircut at the end of the month when i'm back in the u.s so I, I, I went from, you know, not worrying about spending $30 on a single glass of wine to not being able to spend $30 on a haircut. <clears throat> wow. That, that's just heart wrenching. Um, Sam, that is a, that's a heart wrenching story. Our heart goes out to you. How did you end up investing with Clayton Morris and his program? Well, I was uh, coming up on retirement. I was scared of the stock market in uh, 2016. And I knew I wanted to get into real estate. And I lived in Honolulu. The amount of money I had to invest at the most would have got me three of the properties. And in Honolulu? In Honolulu. <laughs> okay. I, I had never thought about you know, being an absentee landowner. Okay. Uh, and then I was, um, I'm, I'm a, you probably guessed already, I'm a bit of a tech geek. Okay. So I, I watch just about all the podcasts on uh, tech TV. Okay. And Clayton Morris, as you know, wrote an app that I used all the time called Read Fast. And he was on one of the shows and mentioned that he had this real estate podcast. I, I felt like I knew him. You know, it's not like I watched Fox TV or anything, but I knew him from, you know, technology podcast, and uh, his wife Natalie was a friend of a friend, and you know, 
when he started talking about having his podcast, I was like, oh, I need to learn about stuff like that. Let me start listening. So I was actually at sea. So I had to wait till I came into the next port to download all their past podcasts. So navigating a ship back and forth across the ocean. Every night on watch, I had one of my earphones in listening to his uh, spiel. Okay. I was sucked in by it. So so his shows are what propelled you to invest. And how much money uh, did you have available to you to invest with him? I had $730,000. That was my 401k, my IRA, my pension IRA, and I cashed out a full life. Uh, a whole life uh, life insurance policy, and I took a HELOC out on my house. And, and you invested all of that with Clayton Morris? No, I saved back about a, enough money for a year's living expenses because even though he made it sound like, you know, in a couple of months you'd be up and running, I figured it'd be more like a year before I could see any income coming off of rental houses. Okay, so of that uh, 700 something thousand you had, that was everything you had, your life savings. Do you know the approximate number you ended up investing with Clayton's program? About 690,000. Okay, and, and how did that go? What happened to that 690,000 when you invested it with Clayton's program? Did you make money or did you lose money? <laughs> oh, no. I think right now I'm running at about 52% loss. How did you spend that 690000 What did you buy? And then what was happening with your money that brings you to where you are today where you've lost more than half of it? Well, I bought 15 houses. Okay. Ranging from, let's see, I think the least expensive one I bought was about uh, 39000 The most expensive one I bought was 60000 One was in Detroit. Two were in Florida and the rest were in Indianapolis and everything seemed okay at first. I was planning on going up and visiting the houses as soon as I was able to uh, cut loose from selling my home in Honolulu and uh, start. I I was planning on traveling uh, when I retired. Now I had to retire to get a hold of my money. And so I uh, didn't want to live in Honolulu anymore. After my retirement, I was selling my place, decided, you know, to start traveling. And uh, so I was gearing up to, you know, go around the U.S. and visit all my properties and see them. I wasn't expecting anything to be wrong. And while I was selling my place, I uh, fell sick with a cold. And as soon as that was over, I got the flu for three weeks. I was very, very ill. And I get this email from one of the other owners saying, are you having problems with uh, receiving your, uh, I think it was April rents. And I was. And then I, what had happened was she had gotten an email where all the owners and a lot of other people were copied in without it being blind copy. So she had this huge mailing list and she just did a broadcast email to all of us going, are you having these issues? These are the issues I'm having. And I was like, yes, you know, they just told me that uh, one of my tenants had stopped paying their rent and, uh, you know, they were starting an eviction. And then we started bouncing things back and forth. Uh, You know, I found out it was all a scam. Well, can can we take a step back? Uh, Can we just like paint a, a more detailed picture? So it's roughly April. You receive this email. Other people are carbon copied on it. So you mm-hmm. talked to a couple other folks that were also having trouble collecting rent. No, no I wasn't the one that uh, got the email. The email was got by a woman named Amanda. Okay. And she just made a mailing list out of all those uh, copied in addresses. Okay. Assuming that, you know, they were uh, clients of Morris Invest. And we just, we started up a, a Google group okay, and started just talking about our experiences. What were some of the other people in that Google group experiencing that led you guys to believe that this could possibly be a scam? Well, see, I had no suspicion whatsoever because it was just a few days of, oh, we're sorry, we didn't get the April rents for this property. 
uh, and I was very sick too. So I wasn't, uh, you know, like digging into it, trying to find out what's going on. I had no suspicions. And it was when everybody started telling their stories, uh, you know, people saying, oh, I went to see my property. It's got squatters in it or some of my other properties. They say they're paying rent to Morris Invest. I've never received rent. So I hired people to go look at my houses. And that's when I absolutely was convinced it was a scam. What did they I mean, uncover when they looked at your houses? Oh, boy. Uh, they sent me photographs. And when they sent me photographs, they said, make sure you're sitting down and try to be very calm when you look at these. Uh, one house was missing half its back wall. They had been sending me photographs of their rehabs. And my new property manager sent me photographs that were just horrifying. Uh, they, they, they laid carpet over a hole in the floor so that they could take some pretty pictures of one property to send to me. These are uh, slum houses. You know, they're not the class C properties. They, they're class D properties. Now, uh, <clears throat> when you hired these, these individuals to, to confirm what your properties look like and they're sending you these photos, the home without a wall, the home where they had laid carpet over a hole in the floor, I, I would presume the first thing you did uh, is reach out to Clayton Morris and, and his company, Morris Invest, and ask them what's going on. What had happened when you did that? No reply. Now, this is the kicker. A couple of weeks after they refused to answer any of my emails, uh, they uh, contacted me and offered to sell me another house. How many times did you, that's crazy. How many times did you contact them? Because I would assume, right, if I'm you, I'm, I'm retired. I spent the majority of my life savings uh, with this man who I've seen on TV and who you said you started to feel like you knew him. Um, everything seems like it's going well. You find out from all these other people they're having problems. So you hire third parties to go corroborate their stories and you find out that your homes that you thought had tenants in them and were paying you rent are in your words slums one in your words was missing the back wall one they had placed carpet over a hole in the floor i imagine you know that was probably very shocking and hurtful to you how many times did you reach out to clayton morris and morris invest i mean you had to be frantic at this point no well actually hearing so many other stories i only did basic you know, basically sending emails to every email address I had, text messages to every phone number I had, just basically saying, you know, you've ripped me off. What are you going to do about it? No answer. I'm actually a pretty pragmatic person. I knew I had lost everything. And that is the basis that I went off of, was you've lost everything. You've done something really stupid. Now... <clears throat> Throughout this entire process, Clayton Morris has maintained that he was merely a middleman and he was merely connecting investors like you with property managers in these markets. And the big market where you had the majority of your loss was Indianapolis. And the main person that he was connecting investors with was Burt Whalen and his company, Ocean Point. At I'd any, never heard of Burt Whalen until the uh, emails started going back and forth among the owners. Never heard of him. Clayton so, Morris, if you listen to his podcast, makes it sound like Ocean Point is his company. Okay. So when you were actually going through the process to buy these properties, you thought you were buying them from Clayton Morris? Yes. And the first property they sold me, I actually bought directly from Clayton Morris. As in Clayton Morris had signed your purchase agreement? Yes. And basically I questioned them when the next one was signed by someone called Natalie Basin or something like that. And they were like, oh, yeah, she's just the office manager here. You so know, Clayton they can't sign every one. 
so so just to clarify what you're telling me now, the first property you bought, you have no idea who Burt Whalen is. Clayton Morris himself actually signed your purchase agreement, but the mm-hmm. second property you bought, another person named Natalie signed your purchase agreement. This confused you. You asked the Clayton Morris Invest team who she was, and they clarified to you who she was. Who'd they say? They said she was the office manager. Now, you know, 2020 hindsight, I realized that any time I was asking a question that could have legal issues, they phoned me. They did not answer an email on anything that could really come back at them. And, of course, I interpreted this as them being very uh, helpful and personal and taking care of me. I, it wasn't until later I realized, oh, they were making sure no, nothing like that was in writing. But in these phone calls, mm-hmm. what were they doing? Were they trying to assure you? Like, it sounds like you had a little bit of doubts. Were they assuring you that, no, you're dealing directly with Clayton Morris's properties? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, uh, and you know, plus, you know, Natalie's sister, apparently worked for Ocean Point. You know, it made it seem like it was just this family business. So, uh, you know, I assumed that this uh, Natalie Basin or whatever her name was, was a uh, part of his family. Because it seemed like every time you turned around, a family member was involved in this. So it came across to me as a very you know, family-oriented thing. When was the first time that someone from Clayton Morris or his team, Morris Invest, or him himself, Clayton himself, when was the first time someone ever mentioned to you that your that they believed your problems were in fact with Burt Whalen? When was that ever brought to your attention? Or was it? Well, I, uh, after this all blew up, I got no personal contact from Morris at best, except for his uh, shield trying to get me to buy another house. Uh, everything basically was letters sent to the group telling us that, oh, no, 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 Bert Whalen, we don't have anything to do with them. Clayton was conned. He found out Ocean Point was a fraud. He set up this new company. Switch all your properties to this new management company. And, uh, so at first, yeah, I, I thought, yeah, hell, man, poor man, he's been conned. So I did switch them over. And then I found out that uh, this new company was apparently the same company with a different name. And But at this time, I was being bombarded with emails from all these other owners, people actually going to the offices of Ocean Point and pounding on the doors. Yeah. You know. And finding out that Ocean Point in Jacksonville was a UPS drop. <laughs> and so I, um, and of course, all the owners were like, oh, I found this uh, property manager. I'm getting all my stuff out from underneath these people and seeing what I can salvage. And I figured that was the best direction to go. So I got in touch with uh, one of the property managers there in Indianapolis and just basically figured I was cutting my losses. Like talking to you now, this is because I've given up on the lawsuit. I've I've come to terms with the fact that I've lost all that investment. Why have you given up on the class action lawsuit? Does it have anything to do with the fact that Clayton had fled the United States to go to Portugal? Yeah. Yep. Yep. That has a lot to do with it. And the fact that, uh, you know, it seems like in the atmosphere of the U.S. judicial system right now, if you're, you know, average white guy who rips off people with your tongue instead of with a gun, nothing's going to happen to you. Especially when you take off and move to (laughs) Portugal. So what was the tone like in your group, your group of other investors who you've, I would imagine, built somewhat of a support system with? What was the tone like when the information, when the articles came out that Clayton had left the United States? I think the general tone is that all of us are just like figures. I I think we're beyond being shocked about anything anymore. I mean, 
my story is bad, but my story is not the worst. One guy, uh, the house burned before he bought it and he was never told it burned. Uh, one person bought uh, one of Clayton's new build houses. Uh, when he went to see it, it had no doors and windows. They had simply put siding all around the house without putting doors and windows in. Wow. Uh, I mean, it got to the point where I wasn't even reading them anymore. It was just too much for me to handle. I mean, I had a really good income before I retired. And the only reason I retired when I did was because I figured I'd run out of good luck. I was in a dangerous job and I figured, you know, if I kept at it, I would end up dying in it. But I thought I had everything settled where I have a decent income in my retirement. Not you as good as when I was working full time, but you know, suddenly, you know, I was sitting there thinking, I no longer can uh, take my time selling my condo. I can't afford this mortgage payment. You know, I've got to take uh, whatever they offer me. And which is what I did. I accepted uh, quite a bit less for my condo in Honolulu than I would have. What do you think should happen to Clayton Morris? Because of all of this, I still want to see him under the jail. And his wife, too, because I would have never invested with him if she hadn't have been uh, sitting next to him with the baby cooing. And you know, she, she gave him the respectability. If he had just been some guy, I, I wouldn't have invested. Do you think that Clayton Morris intended to defraud you and others, or do you think he was really duped by Burt Whalen? I think he was a fraud. I think he knew what he was doing. Because if you look at the stories he tells on himself, oh, you know, I made this bad investment, I did that bad investment. In retrospect, looking at those, you know, he was trying to get something over on somebody with those investments. He just ended up short with them. And no, I, I don't, I don't believe his story about being a victim. I think he should be brought back to the United States, stripped of everything he owned and serve a good long jail sentence. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.